The 100 Episode 6, His Sister's Keeper. This was a really good episode, and I love the way that it ended, because although it, in one way it was really anticlimactic with Bellamy talking to this random character and just saying, come in, a storm's coming, at the same time, only 10 or so seconds before that, even less, a lot of climactic things happened. Bellamy argued with Octavia where they each said some really, really harsh things, and basically they both just blamed each other for their mother's death and everything that went wrong. And then before that, Finn gets stabbed in what was almost a death spot. It was right under his heart almost. And there are a lot of plot points that get introduced in this episode that are really just plot points through conflicts that come to a head in this episode, either from stuff that we saw coming, like Clark having to talk to Raven and Raven finding out what happened between Clark and Finn, or stuff that happened in the end of this episode between Bellamy and Octavia where I didn't expect them to really get into a heated argument like they did where they end up blaming each other but it they just do they get into a confrontation where Octavia blames Bellamy for all of these things because of his rage and his overprotection of her does lead to crazy things happening and him trying to do the best that he can for her sometimes fails like it does in both the past and the present but it was a great episode, and I love the flashbacks between Bellamy and Octavia, of course. That was probably one of my favorite parts of this episode, getting to see them. We even see Octavia when she's born, and Bellamy's promise to her when she's born. And they have their interaction. We see their mother, their father either just wasn't there, you know, her mother was, their mother was knocked up, or maybe he died, or who knows. But he's never in there, and it's them and their mother. And they go through all this stuff. It skips... It spans through time from her birth until present day, or at least until the day of the first episode. And it was just really good. And even when Bellamy was trying to do the best that he could as a big brother to this little girl who technically isn't allowed to exist, or legally isn't allowed to exist, it backfires on him the one night she he's able to give her something that she's always wanted, which was the ability to interact with other people and actually see outside of their home. And one of the things I love about that, it was one of my favorite lines in this episode, is when he tries to, when Bellamy tries to protect Octavia once they have the random search at the party, and he says, you do whatever you can, but get home. And she just looks at him and says, how do I get home? And I thought that was a great line from her because she has never left their house or their little couple of rooms. She has no idea where she is or where to go. And she's just in excitement when she's leaving their room and she's looking out she sees earth and the moon she doesn't know where she is she's not thinking oh i have to i better keep track of every single turn and every single distinction between these metal hallways she was just excited and was finally seeing the world that even if it's small compared to the world itself of earth the ark is their world and it was at that point at least and she was just excited and she had no idea how to get home and i thought that was an amazing line from her and it was just a really cool scene where she asked him that and he has no answer because he realizes taking her out and giving her something that she may have always wanted with it backfiring the way it has there's no way out of it because they're trapped and I just love that scene and it was sad to see them get caught and of course they sort of skip over all the really sad details where she gets put in prison and their mother gets killed but it skips a year after that point, and then it gets to the day of the first episode, and we finally see who it is that actually went to Bellamy and told him to shoot the Chancellor. And it's the lieutenant, or commander now, and I assume at that point in time he was still working for the guy who sort of turned a new leaf in the last episode, who was trying to become the Chancellor over and over again through any means. I assume he was still working under him, although he doesn't specifically say it. But he is the one who actually went to Bellamy, and that's how Bellamy was able to get on the ship. And I thought it was interesting that they didn't actually show exactly how things went down, because I still feel like with the age that he was at, I think he was he's over 18. And, you know, he I mean, we saw her born, and he definitely wasn't like two years old. She's She would have to be 16, and you get trialed when you're 18, so he definitely wasn't just two years old. But... He, the guy, the commander worked his way and he somehow got Bellamy on that ship. But it was a great point in the episode, all the little flashbacks that we got to see in their evolution as siblings with 
Octavia having to live under the floorboards and how some of the things carry over from when she was young, like her saying, I'm not afraid. And that translated to her when she was in the cave captured by the one grounder. And I guess that's a great segue to get to the grounders in this episode who are definitely showcased far more than we've been able to see in any other episode, whether it's through just a lot of running, which it mostly was running off in the distance, or even if it's just up close stuff. And it was mostly for the one guy who had Octavia and they put something in there as subtle as it was, they introduced something that clearly shows the fact that not everyone on the ground is banded together because this guy for some reason was off on his own the entire episode and he was even the one who blew the foghorn to get all the grounders away from his path to Octavia back at wherever his random cave was. So I'm very curious to see what that is. Like, why is he off on his own? Why are there different factions on the ground? Even though they all clearly look alike, so it's not like they're different tribes who dress differently to distinguish themselves. They were all dressed fairly similar. It was just like black and leather and like Mad Max type of stuff. But he's off on his own for some reason and I just want to see what why that is I'm very curious about that and unfortunately I honestly don't think we'll get that even in this season it could be towards the end of the season if we do but it'll probably be something one of the big storylines they say for season two where the characters sort of get more acquainted with the grounders and maybe just that one character and he learns to speak and stuff and for all we know he speaks perfect English maybe people have grown up and there were pockets of people that survived on earth and they kept the language going and it never changed he just didn't speak to her because he's trying to figure out who are these people that came from earth and these are obviously the people or came from space I mean because these are obviously the people or ancestors of the people who left the planet when things got bad and he's trying to be calculating and figure certain stuff out but on the other hand maybe he doesn't because the other grounders obviously aren't taking the time to be diplomatic. They're just like throwing spears and impaling people with crazy strength, which that still really sticks out to me how hard they can throw those spears and then just impel someone into a tree. But it was just really interesting. And we got to see that they set up traps and stuff, which we've seen in some other episodes too. But it was a great episode with two random people getting killed off. Finn's in danger. I'm sure he'll survive because I thought when he got stabbed, they can't just kill off everybody in this show. At least not all the main characters. They can't just be like, we'll wait for episodes. Oh, there's another main character dead. So I'm pretty sure he'll be safe. I'm sure they'll find some miracle way to bring him back to life. And or, Well, obviously he's not dead, but to just keep him alive and keep him safe. But down the path of Finn's storyline is the fact that both Clark and Raven have confronted each other and Raven figured out because of the little origami figure that Clark and Finn have had sex with each other, that they've been sleeping together. And I knew it was gonna eventually come out in some way, but I actually liked the way they did it, where it was fairly subtle, and even Clark didn't realize that Raven had figured it out because she was trying to really just distance herself from making things awkward, and she completely missed the fact that Raven figured the whole thing out. And it was a good confrontation, and I love the some of the things that they say, especially Clark, when. Raven says, do you love him? And she just turns around and says, I hardly know him. And just leaves. Like, it, you know, there's not much I can really say. But I thought that was a great scene. And also, when Clark mentions how she never even knew, and she mentions all the stuff about, we, for all he knew, you were dead, and my mother and everyone we've ever known. And Raven said the best thing anyone could say is he could have waited more than 10 days, which I thought... That's just a life lesson. You could wait more than 10 days, and that's very true. He he sort of rushed into it. That, that was something I thought immediately, even when it was clear that he was obviously going to end up being the person with Clark. I just thought he could wait like a tiny bit. He could give it some time. He waited a week and a half, like a little bit less than a week and a half, and he slept with somebody else who was just on the ground. And it was just like, that's not a good enough excuse. And it, it wasn't for Raven. And I'm excited to see how that little confrontation comes to a head. And I think it'll be better than in most shows. It won't be this sort of love triangle thing that we see most of the time. It, cause, especially with Clark, because she just seems like, meh. I didn't know you existed. I wouldn't have done it. It sucks. I kind of like the guy. That's why I slept with him. 
I didn't know you existed at all. This sucks. I'm sorry. And then she just kind of just get, washes her hands of the whole situation. So I don't think it's going to be that stupid lovey-dovey triangle where everyone has to figure out what they're going to do. And they'll probably all just end up single and just have to deal with each other within the camp. But love the episode. Love the ending to it, especially, like I said, with all the confrontational things that have happened. With no resolution, they all just kind of came to a head. I guess the Raven-Clark thing was solved pretty much between them. But Raven's definitely going to be talking to Finn regardless of whether or not he's been hurt, she's still gonna want answers as to why he did what he did. So a lot of conflict that was built up to and then not resolved by the end of this episode. And I'm definitely excited for next week's, but great plot points. Still, the most curious thing about it was definitely, for me at least, the grounder who was off on his own and why he's on his own, why he had to blow the horn to trick the people into thinking that the acid fog was coming and you know, why did he have to do all that stuff just to protect himself? Was he exiled from their camp? Just a bunch of questions are in my head, but that's definitely what I'm most curious about so far in this episode, but still a great episode where fortunately no main characters died. That was just a nice random good thing. And the deaths that we do get to see were not incredibly sad like last week, but good episode. Can't wait to see how things get even crazier next week. And we also didn't get to see anyone on the arc. So I think next week is going to be really focused. If it's not completely focused on the arc, which it mostly was last week. There were bits and pieces of them, obviously, trying to get a signal up to the arc. But for the most part, the arc was the main focus last week. And then this episode was completely on Earth. So next week, we might get back into the formula of the sort of half and half aspect of it. But we'll hopefully get to see how... The people on the arc react to seeing the flares in the sky but comment below let me know what you guys thought of this episode favorite parts least favorite parts and definitely tell me what aspect or plot point in this episode do you guys want to see resolved the most comment below let me know and thanks for watching